Hi, I'm David Summer, the Chief Technical Officer at Barrelwise Technologies, and today we're going to be discussing information flow across Barrelwise's technical teams. It is essential to have integrated and connected information management to be able to create integrated and connected complex systems. We want to do this in a way that maximizes collaboration and transparency while minimizing risk and resource usage. We'll discuss four classes of systems engineering information that we need to track continually to be effective, and the tools that we're going to use to do so. The first is planning and project management, detailing what needs to be done and what resources are needed to do it. The second, and perhaps most obvious engineering information we need to track is our design assets. These describe the engineered systems we are creating and are the primary output of design, research, and development activities. It's convenient to break these up into physical and software categories because the information required for each is generally quite distinct. This might be the drawings, specifications, and other engineering decisions we made that define and realize a system. In the case of software, we'll have the same information as well as the asset itself, the code. There will also be various types of documentation that support both project management and design information, capturing the process of developing assets and making engineering decisions. We also need to operationalize our designs, get them to our customers, and support them in the real-world operating environment. Some information in the documentation will be unique to a particular project phase, while others will be repeated across multiple project phases. For example, the product breakdown structure for a system will be the same for planning, design, and operations documents. The sharing and inheritance of information between phases is essential to advancing system technical readiness. For example, transferring design asset information to manufacturers and supporting rollout with customers form the basis of advancement from TRL 7 to 8 and TRL 8 to 9, respectively. Information from the operating environment also needs to flow back and be incorporated into design assets to fix bugs and make improvements for future versions. We also need to move information forward from project planning to work on design assets, and sometimes the design work and trade studies are required to formulate and inform our project plans. We want to set up a system of information management that maps well to these phases, information types, and the interconnectivity between them. The tools we're going to use to manage information flow are as follows. Atlassian Confluence for documentation, Atlassian Jira for planning and project management, Atlassian Bitbucket for code storage and management, and Google Drive and the rest of the G Suite platform to host all of our other design assets. Now it's important to keep in mind that these tools are not our information management system. The information management system is our team capturing and communicating information effectively, and hopefully these tools will facilitate this. We want to set up these tools and the connections between them to facilitate an information management system that maps well to both our products and our workflow as a team. The remainder of this video will look at capturing different information into each of these tools but we'll really focus on setting up connections between these tools. We want particular kinds of connections. Specifically, we want to focus on having a single source of truth as much as possible. This means information lives in one place and is referenced, not repeated, where it is needed. We also want to be able to reuse information so that our design work, decisions, and documentation activities overlap as much as possible. Now, let's take a look at some of these tools we're going to use to track information. Jira, Confluence, and Bitbucket are all part of the Atlassian suite, so they have inherent connectivity. Let's start off in Jira by making an issue, in this case, a story of a piece of software work we need to get done to advance technical readiness of a system. In this story, we need to describe what needs to be done, and importantly, how we know when it is done. We also need to capture the resources required to execute this piece of work. In this case, it will be me, and I need to work with the rest of the team to allocate a time estimate for this issue. I'm also going to assign this issue to an epic so it is tracked correctly and is given context with the other activities on this project. Now once we create this issue, it lives in Jira and is tracked in our backlog or a sprint. Let's look at how we can integrate this issue with the actual design asset that it will advance, the test code. If I open this issue, I can see this create branch link. Clicking this automatically creates a new branch based on this issue. I want it to be on the free sulfur sensor repository. This is a feature we're adding and I want to give it an easy descriptive name but I want to keep this issue number in here so we can easily reference it back to Jira. When I create this branch, Bitbucket asks me if I want to check out this branch in source tree so that changes in my local file system will be tracked on this branch. Alternatively, I could go into source tree later and check out this branch at any time. Now that I've got this branch checked out, if I make changes to the code, in this case, adding this new function that will support with integration testing, we can see that these changes are tracked in source tree, showing what code was deleted or added and all the affected files. I can commit these changes to the repository by staging the files and writing a descriptive comment of what I've changed and hitting commit. 
We can see this change is tracked in source tree on my local machine, and if I open the Bitbucket cloud repository, that commit is immediately showing up on the server and will be updated for everyone who is referencing this repository. I can see this branch in Bitbucket, and if I return to Jira, I can see this change is reflected directly within the issue I created it from. I can't see my commit in this window within the issue because I didn't properly label my commit. If I go back to source tree and make another commit, but this time I include the issue number in the commit description, Jira will be able to reference it. I'll make this commit, and now, when I push up to the repository, we will immediately see this reflected in Bitbucket Cloud. And if we go back to the Jira issue, we can now see the commits to the repository that relate to this particular issue. We can see what files have changed and track the evolution of this design asset associated with this work. Now let's talk quickly about adding some documentation to go along with this work. I'll open Confluence and go to our systems engineering space. From our hierarchical page tree structure on the left, I'm going to select the subsystem that this work relates to. I want to put the work at the lowest tier level at which all of the relevant child systems are included. The choice of which tier level page we want to use to document our work on is a balance between getting as much specificity and focus as possible while minimizing the splitting of tightly integrated interfaces across different distinct branches of the product breakdown structure. This balance might change throughout the design lifecycle. In this case, since this test function is for integration testing between the FreeSulfur sensor control unit subsystem and the FreeSulfur data acquisition subsystems, I'll need to put it at this tier 1 level. I'll start by creating a heading so that my work is easily found and referenced within this page. I can create a link to a Jira issue directly from Confluence. I can find an issue easily by recently viewed, or I can look up a specific issue based on its ID. I'll insert this issue into my page. Now, when I publish, I can see at the top of this page all of the Jira issues that are referenced. And conversely, if I go to Jira, I can access a reference to this Confluence page directly so that I can easily manage both the project planning and documentation of this work, with it linked directly to the software design asset itself via Bitbucket. This way, we have the development and documentation of design assets linked directly to the tasks and resource requirements applied to advance them. In the next video, we'll discuss other design assets, such as drawings, schematics, bill of materials, and other engineering decision-making and modeling frameworks. We'll establish links between these assets and fit them in with the information management tools we discussed today.